Time to shine today. Varsity squad, it is Scott Ferguson. And I have my long-awaited interview with my good friend from the left coast, Sage L. Thacker. Uh, she is an attorney, but she's not your average employment law attorney. Her more than 15 years of experience advising clients, human resources personnel, and legal counsel regarding sound standard employment practices uncovered a need, a personal passion for bringing more proactive, relevant, and impactful workplace training programs to her clients and their teams. Her highly ex experiential customized workshops tailored to executives, managers, and individual contributors bring the courtroom to the training room in an interactive, engaging environment that favors human stories over compliance checklists. And my lady, good friend here, Sage L, and she has the best eyes in the world. So I always compliment her on her eyes and also that awesome smile. But trust me, I don't think I'd want to go head to head with her in any courtroom because <laughs> not only does she, she's very, lack of a better term, ruthless on taking care of her clients and she does everything she can. She's an epitome of a go giver. And I'm so blessed that she carved the time out to come on the Time to Shine today. So, Sage L, thank you so much for coming on. Introduce yourself to Time to Shine today, Varsity Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Oh my God, I love green just because green. it matches my eyes and <laughs> it's been a blessing. But yeah, that's my favorite color. Green. And it's in your color wheel, you know, because yes. your eyes and whatnot. So let's get into the origins of Sage Ellen. Like you're from the time maybe of law school or if there's any other story that came before, please share with our squad. Yeah, well, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me here and, and the wonderful compliments. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so, you know, everything you said right there, um, I was born and raised in Chicago. My parents actually moved from India to Chicago in 1974. So I grew up there. I, um, my parents were the only, when we grew up, we were the only Indian family in an all Italian neighborhood. Yeah. So when I think back to my childhood, Scott, I, I remember just asking why a lot. A lot of times I was asking, why is this happening? Or why are they saying this to me? Or why is that happening? And I think it was around nine years old when my dad said, she's going to be an attorney. She's going to be a lawyer because she's asking why way too much. So he was right. I followed my passion and then um, went to law school graduated and I found that, you know, I really have a passion for helping people see different perspectives. And so that's what led to me starting my company, Train Extra, three years ago. And luckily I got past COVID. I'm still standing and I and I love what I do. So that's a, just a quick nutshell about what I'm doing out there. I love it. And so when you say that the perspectives, is it from different backgrounds or different situations or, or what? Let's elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, all of that. You know, I think as an attorney, what I saw was that a lot of times these cases were ending up in court because there were differences between people and they didn't know how to navigate through those differences. There might have been some conflict and they didn't know how to resolve that conflict or there was some breakdown in communication. And what I found is being an attorney that I really wasn't a litigator. You know, I found myself helping resolve conflict and helping people see that there's more to their story than maybe what meets our eye or what we immediately think when we see someone or a situation. And so, you know, having developed those skills throughout my career, I found that, wait, when you give people new information, you show them the factual information that it actually expands their awareness and it helps you in resolving conflict. So I take that all now into the training room and I teach people these skills so that they can navigate through some of these situations that we just can't avoid anymore. Wow. So what do you think is the biggest culprit in the breakdown in communication? I think it's just our differences, Scott. You know, we're all raised differently. We've gone through different things. We look at the world differently and that's it. It's it's really that basic. And so in, in my work, I really bring it back down to the basics. It's like we, we're throwing people together in these communities and these work environments and these schools, but we're not giving them the skills on how to navigate through our differences. You know, we can't just assume everybody knows how to get along. We have to teach people and train people and give people those skills. I love it. And, you know, I never go political on this show, but there's a lot of that going on nationwide right now. It's a country I defended, a country I went to war for in 1991. And I really wish that they had you up there kind of marrying the two so we could kind of come to a resolution. And I'm praying every single day to my God that that, that, that happens. So when you got, may I ask where you went to law school? Yeah, I went to Northern Illinois in wow. DeKalb, Illinois. Huskies, mm -hmm. right? The Huskies. Yeah, oh, it okay, is. very cool. I'm from Detroit, so I'm from the oh. Midwest. Chicago is where I love to go visit, and yeah. it's just it was fun. So, 
with did you go to school for like that kind of attorney i'm making up a word here but like that kind of law no you know actually when i went to law school i didn't even take a class in employment law I always saw myself as doing something in social justice. So I took a lot of civil litigation. I took constitutional law. I was taking things like evidence. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking more general civil litigation. I didn't know I'd end up in this niche. It kind of just fell into my lap. And what I found was I actually started off by doing workers' compensation. Oh, wow. And in there, I knew that wasn't the right fit, but I dealt with some cases that dealt with employees who were discriminated against because they filed a complaint. And there, oh, wow. the light bulb started to go off. And I was like, well, it's not necessarily workers' compensation that's my area. It's the fact that when people are treated differently or discriminated against or harassed, that's what I was drawn to. And, and, and I wanted to go more in that direction. So that's why I went into employment law. So if someone comes and says, you know, um, so-and-so treated me a, an inappropriate way, and then that person is discriminated against because they try to go against the hierarchy, you, they maybe bring you in to maybe get back to the basics of communication to help maybe work things out? Well, so for when I was litigating in court, I was actually representing leaders and supervisors who were accused or allegedly engaging in these behaviors. So I was a defense attorney. Oh. Now, all I'm doing, Scott, is I'm doing 100% training. I'm focusing all my efforts on proactively addressing these issues because as an attorney, you know, once the lawsuit is filed, nobody wins. Everybody loses in that situation. And I really wanted to get in front of people and help give them those skills beforehand. So when there are these things going on at work that they know how to resolve those or how to communicate or how to speak up about those situations so that we can address them early on before it gets to that point where somebody feels like the only choice they have is to file a lawsuit. So who are you training then? Are you training the HR personnel or the in-house, I guess we local or in-house attorney or like who are you setting up these trainings for us, Rachel? Everybody. I'm training okay. leaders, I'm training a HR, anybody, see the culture of the organization is made up of its people. So if sure. you are a part of an organization, then really my focus is, is providing training to, that deals with how do we deal with these differences and the I would I call it incivility that happens in the workplace. Uh -huh. And so my, my focus is let's create a culture around where everyone is treated with dignity and respect, where there's diversity and everyone feels included and there's belonging. So I'm kind of, my training is really a combination of your anti-harassment training plus your diversity inclusion training. Cause I think those are separate issues but they all contribute to a lot of the incivility that happens at work. So I'm addressing both of those in my trainings. Uh, I love it. Cause you're actually almost forming leaders in a sense with what you're doing. So in your opinion, say Joe, what do you think makes a great leader? Yes, I am forming leaders and that's it. And every person in the organization has to be a part of that solution. So what my trainings are all about is how do we empower people and we empower them by giving them the skills and the tools and helping them see that they are a part of the solution. You know, a lot of times you'll have people saying, well, my company's doing this or they're not doing this. And I, my, my question is, well, you play a part in that. And so let's help you see what your part is and give you the skills so that you can also contribute to making sure that the decisions that you're making or the actions you're taking line up with your organization's values. So like it everybody has a role values. and they, yes. they, they can play to the best of their ability. I love that. So if I'm at a networking event, whether I'm pressing flesh in person or virtually, what is someone saying to me that would make them a good prospect, contact, or connection for you? Anybody that has any employees, you know, if you've got one employee, you need to start focusing in on your culture. A lot of these places wait till it's there. You know, I've heard this all the time. We don't have enough employees or we're a small place and we don't have those issues. And that, that's not true. If you've got one employee, you need to figure out what are your core values for your company and then make sure that everyone's behaviors, including your own are lining up with your core values as you grow or as you interact with customers or clients or vendors. If you're interacting with people, you know, you want to make sure that you're treating them in that way that they want to be treated, but also making sure that you're clear on what those behaviors are. A lot of times, you know, people don't know. 
because right. of their culture and they think that maybe they think they're joking or they think it's okay but it's not okay for the person that they're interacting with it's yeah. not you're right because everybody yeah. kind of like you said is cut from a different sheath and that diversity is is, is what makes in my opinion this country great you know and we just got to learn how to communicate with that diversity it's fantastic so then you're you're bringing somebody in to be your client what is some of the secret sauce that you might have you don't mind sharing to help them find their blind spots within their within their company yeah i mean you know i think you have to look at it both from an individual perspective as well as an organizational perspective so looking at you know how can we empower our people so that they can do the work like you said, to recognize their own blind spots, which we all have, right? Mm. We, because of our own lens that we look at, sure. we view the world differently. But within there, we have these biases and bias is not a, <laughs> in and of itself a negative thing, right? but that just means we have a preference for one thing over another. And all of, you know, as of now, there have been over 200 different cognitive biases identified. So, you know, it's just the way our brain works. And so sure. once you figure out what those are, then there are strategies to help you mitigate those from impacting important decisions that you make that are going to impact those around you. Wow. So organizations need to invest in their people to teach them how to do that, as well as from an organizational standpoint, looking at all of your systems, your policies, your procedures to make sure that if there's systemic bias or racism within those structures, that they root those issues out and create new processes and new systems. And it's, it's doable. It takes effort. It's not a one-time thing. It's ongoing. But I don't think we have a choice right now, Scott. I think we all need right. to do the inner work as well as organizations need to really do that work. Right. And we're all human beings, including yourself. Yes. And all of us have our thoughts. Like what helps you keep an even keel, for lack of a better term, so your bias doesn't get involved in the conversation while you're trying to coach? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you do? What's your secret sauce for that? I'm continue. I'm a work in progress. I am doing the work as I'm doing this, and I'm learning more about myself. It's really getting to know yourself. You <laughs> and know? you're you're learning on the job, even though yes. you're the professional. You're picking up steps Absolutely. every day, and you're and so I, humble to admit that. And thank you, thank you so much. It's true. So, yeah. when you're starting to work with companies, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? Hmm. They would ask me, that's a good one, but they never do. Hmm, let me think about that. Because you're, you're coming to me and, and like, sometimes when you're going into an organization, you're like, shit, here comes a civil rights leader or something like that. Someone might think that, right? Yeah. And like you, you're, you're, I know that when I go into an organization to coach, yeah, you know, and the, the CEO, the, the higher usually brings me in because I'm referred to them. And then you have that one captain that's underneath there. Like if I was that captain, I'd probably be, okay, so tell me about what your fail is, Sage. Hey, give me a fail of yours. You know, that's yeah. like a question that I might ask you, but you know, that's what I hope that they ask me because of a second, that's the way I diffuse every situation. I talk about my failures and the situation that I'm doing so. And I'm sure that they're hesitant to ask you. I mean, they're like, oh, she's an attorney. He, she's coming you know, in and doing I, it. I don't, I don't know though, because I'm okay. very open. You know, okay. like if you look at my podcast that I've done and my, all of the mm. stuff that I've talked about, I'm very open about my experiences. I think as leaders, we need to be vulnerable. We need to share with the lessons that we're learning. I do that very openly. I even sure. talk about what I'm learning along the way as a, as a tool to let people know that I'm not just standing here preaching, telling you this stuff. I'm going through it. I'm living it myself. I am experiencing this with you and sure. we're humans. We're going to make mistakes we have to be humble about it we know mm -hmm. we're gonna you know we're not gonna make the right decisions i mean i do this for a living and sometimes i'm doing a training and i'll catch myself you know <laughs> and i'm like oh man I'm, I'm still working on that you know but i right. think that's the thing is that it's, it's we have to just work at it so say joe what keeps you up at night you know, this last year was really tough, Scott. Mm -hmm. It was really, really tough. I mean, COVID really almost knocked me out my business completely because mm -hmm. prior to that, I had put all my eggs into the, I'm going to do live training because I really like being mm -hmm. in front of people. And when COVID, we could we had all these restrictions placed, my business literally went away. And that was very challenging. And, 
you know, I, I had to really dig deep and figure out, is this, is this what I really want to do? Why am I doing this? But, you know, it all clicked into place. Mm-hmm. I, I got I took one step in front of the other. I pivoted like everybody else. We um, did. <laughs> but I, 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 I took a leap of faith on, faith on myself. I really right. did. Um, and I've come out resilient. I've learned some hard lessons. But I, I feel so proud of myself for really just taking one step at a time and not letting my mental state and all just all my anxiety and all the lack of sleep and all of that keep me from moving forward. And so, love it. yeah, I love it. So you've seen the movie Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the 22, 23 year old Sajo. Mm-hmm. Sajo. What kind of knowledge nuggets are you dropping on her to maybe shorten her learning curve, level her up, last through? Yeah, um, I would definitely say, you know, I when I think back to when I was in law school, after I got out of law school, my career up to this point, I was too fixated on a plan. I had this idea of where I wanted to go in my career. I was going to get get through law school. I was going to work at a big law firm. And now that I look back on it, I would tell my younger self, you know, have a plan because it's good to drive your motivation and get you towards your goals. But don't be too fixated on a plan because honestly, I stayed in the law firm setting way too long. I knew it wasn't the right fit for me. It wasn't in alignment with what I wanted to do, but I stayed in there way too long. So I would tell myself, be more flexible, give yourself room to grow and, and do something that lines up with what your sort of core, your inner, you know, your passion, your core values. Love that. I love that. You mentioned core values a lot. That's fantastic. And I hope that you would with what you're doing. (laughs) That's awesome. So how do you want your dash remembered that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life and death date. How do you want to say Joe's dash remember? I just, you know, I'm just, look, I, you mentioned go giver at the beginning of the, of the podcast, you know, mm-hmm. as that I was a go giver. I would just, that's what I'm, that's what I'm out there doing is I am really trying to create positive impact. I want to be remembered as that person that did, did, did that. You know, I, I truly believe that each one of us, is you know can be a good person and mm-hmm. sometimes we just need to work through that stuff and 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 i'm just trying to inspire some positive change in this world i think we Which need it are. and i appreciate right. scott you for doing the stuff that you're doing you know you're amazing yeah. you're creating such a wonderful platform thank you again thank you i appreciate you love here. so what's one thing said you'll know for sure I, I just know for sure that my son is my number one priority. You know, and <laughs> right. everything, everything centers around that. He is How's he, how old one. is he now, love? He's eight. He's eight? Okay. Wow. He's coming into himself. And I bet you it was really challenging during the COVID and whatnot, because you live in the West Coast where it's probably a like the living comp- is really on top of each other where you're at, right? Yeah. I'm not going to divulge where you're at, but it's on top. So that must have been a challenge. You know, I ask you how you got through that kind of stuff. You know what? I mean, honestly, the biggest gift I got last year was that time that, you know, those restrictions were a way to look at it. Love that. I loved having that time with him and even homeschooling him, having that opportunity. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was challenging. And there were days where I wanted to pull my hair out for sure. (laughs) But I, I love spending time with him. And I mean, even before when he was born. I quit law firms and I stayed at home for three and a half years because I wanted to spend my time with him. So last year, that time element was a blessing for me because I got to spend that time with him. I, I look for every opportunity I can to, That's awesome. to be able to be around him. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So then what would your definition of a life well lived be? Hmm. I don't know. Again, going back to just it, 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 every day, I, I feel like my perspective changes. You know, every day gets different. I, I sure. just, I just want to continue to grow. For me, sure. that's my biggest thing is I just want to continue to grow. Yeah. I, I, In progress, I say this, right? In yeah, progress with that growth. I, I always say this is like my favorite line right now. I've spent the last how many every years learning, and now I'm going to spend the rest of my life unlearning. You know <laughs> learning I mean? and relearning, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, I look at it, you know, people, I have clients, and I'm like, listen, man, you, you have to progress. Even, even during the COVID, I would tell my clients, it's like, you don't stay the same. I mean, I look at pictures of me that is on the wall that back there with my mom, and I look a lot different than I did mm-hmm. at 40, almost 49 years old. And then it's just how you take care of yourself and, and also your brain and whatnot. I always progress. I love that. So as we, well, you know, wind things down here just a little bit, Sedja, we have our leveling up lightning round. Mm-hmm. I got five or six questions for you, and you got five seconds to answer them, no explanations. Can we agree on that? 
You got it. All right, counselor, <laughs> let's level up. <laughs> what is the best leveling up advice Sedgels ever received? Um, that would be my dad. He said, life is temporary. Things are temporary. Be present. Enjoy this. Enjoy the moment. It's a Love gift. Love that. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. I self audit all the time. I ask people for feedback. I'm always looking for how can I improve what I'm doing? Love it. Love it. So other than your own website, which is train, I mean, I'm gonna make sure I get train extra and it's T R A I N the letter X T R A.com train extra. And of course, time to shine today.com. I shameless plug. What other website do you like to go to to level up? Um, I, you know, I would say LinkedIn is where I go. I do. I've got enough, all the other stuff. I think we met media. there. Yes. Or, or maybe got, Berta put us together. I'd have to yeah. look that up, you know, but I, one of all, one of us put it was, was together with them. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So I'm in my doldrums, just not feeling it, not feeling up, just not motivated. You're like, Fergie, read this book. What's that book? Mm -hmm. Go Giver. <laughs> Bobby Berg. It's yes. funny. I'm meeting with him next week. Yes. That's fantastic. All right. So what's your most commonly used emoji when you text? Oh, I love the the one last year was the brain with the brain exploding. Up. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. So without divulging in your age, but if you could stay one age physically, okay, don't say the age you are now, yeah. physically and have the wisdom that you've learned and continue to grow and have the wisdom, like what age could, would you be for the rest of your life if you could stay that? Oh, yeah. Um, physically. Physically? You know, I mean, I would say like 35. Yeah, I'm 30. I always say 32. You yeah. know, I'm coming up on 50 yeah. and I'm like, dude, I would love to have that. Yeah. I, I have great energy. I'm, I, I keep myself good. Yeah. But man, that 32 year old was just like, oh, that was unstoppable. You look so, great. You look great, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> What's your favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time and or money to? You know, I do a lot of work for, I donate a lot to Salvation Army. Thank I give you. a lot of my stuff there. I mean, everything literally goes there. Um, but I, 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 I did a marathon a long time ago, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I, I give a lot of money to that organization just because I think it's important. For me. Thank you so, so much. And the last question, what is, you can elaborate on this one a little bit. What is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Mm. I like the 80s. There you go. I knew I you were going to say that. You're 80s. my girl, man. Come on. You had the big yeah. hair, don't care. You yes. had me had everything from rap to the big hair bands to mm -hmm. the English invasion, the Irish invasion with you two. It was like the yes. best. It was the best decade. Yeah. So transformational. It's fantastic. So, Sage, how can we find you, hon? LinkedIn is the best place. I would say follow me on there. I, I like to share resources and information. If I see a good article or a good resource, I'm always sharing that. And um, that would be the best way. And then you always, like you said, my website is the place. If you, if you want to find out what I'm doing or where I'm talking at, that would be the other place. Love it. I love it. And so leave us with, and all those will be in the show notes squad. Uh, leave us with one last knowledge nugget you want us to take with us, internalize, and take action on. You know, I just, last year I learned that it's the little things in life that matter. And so, I, I mean, we saw so much mental health issues going on and I would just tell people, you know, just make time to get to know yourself and take care of your physical and mental, emotional well-being. Check on people, you know, not just the people you know, but strength, you know, your neighbors and check on the communities and just kind of you know, people are struggling a lot right now. Sure. And the more that we can support each other, the better we will be together. I love that. I love that you the check on people squad. You just basically had a free masterclass with my really good friend, Sejal Thacker from trainextra.com. And, you know, she was a youngin that asked why a lot. And I'm sure that her parents just loved that. But you know, she went on to become a fantastic attorney. You know, she wants you to get back to the basics for communication, you know, and she wants to provide atmospheres in, in work environments where diversity is accepted and you feel included. And she does just that, you know, she wants, she's empowering with skills and tools and, and knowing that the skills and the tools are all part of a solution with the progress that Sagil will help you uh, attain. And she understands that behaviors need to line up with the core values at the workplace and she will also remind you that are kind of coming up in life, or even if you're kind of at a standstill, to be flexible. 
you know, understand that you've got a room to grow and ask, or like we like to say, get your asking gear and really ask for help when you need it. She wants, she wants you to enjoy the moments. And lastly, what she said is really just blew my mind is, you know, that little things matter. Take time to know yourself and all the pillars of your life. Know yourself, your health, your money, your family, your relationships. And not only within your circle, she wants you to check on people that you don't even know. The world needs more people like Sadjo. And I'm so blessed. She's humble yet hungry. She levels up her health, levels up her wealth. She's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so, so much for coming on, Sadjo. You earned your varsity letter here at Time to Shine today. Oh, thank Yay. you so much. This is awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk soon, love. Okay.